So let me welcome you to this workshop, Can Deep Neural Networks Solve the Problems of Artificial General Intelligence? Obviously, when I put this workshop together, I hadn't realized that the plenary just before it would be putting a particular view on that as well. You can know that at that point. So, introduction. This, the organization is that will be some talks. I'm going to talk briefly, then Pai Wang will talk, then Cosmo Harrigan will say something, and then Brandon Rohrer will talk. And that's going to be followed by a panel discussion. So for the panel discussion, this room is not really set out very low, but we couldn't get another room. So maybe you can all come forward and actually take part in it. I'm sure you've got things to say in such a panel discussion. Okay, so very briefly, deep neural networks, you all know what they are, deep as in the deep sea, neural as in neurons, and a network as in some kind of a network. Perhaps you don't see it quite like that. Maybe you see it a bit more like this. The deep neural network with a nice old-fashioned view of a multi-layered perceptron. That's kind of old-fashioned. Maybe it looks a bit more like this, something with different kinds of layers inside it. So the question here really is, can these kinds of systems do something to solve the problems in artificial general intelligence? And as we saw in the, in the plenary just now, there are lots and lots of problems in artificial general intelligence. Okay. So I'm going to give about a four minute long presentation saying quite the opposite of what was just said a few minutes ago, talking about deep neural networks and suggesting that maybe they are the only show in town. Why am I saying something like that? Well, I think, first of all, we need to think rather hard about quite what we mean by a deep neural network. Ben Gersel says it's a learning system with adaptive units and multiple layers with the higher level units, recognize patterns and outputs of the lower level units, and also exert some control over these lower level units. I think that's wrong. I think that's a very, very narrow interpretation of what a deep neural network might actually be. If you look at the words, it's deep, which means that quite a few of the neurons are connected neither to the input nor to the output. It's neural in the sense that the objects inside it have something related to neural systems. They don't have to be the kind of cartoon neurons that McCulloch and Pitts put together something, about something rather more than 50 years ago. And it means there are sequences of neurons in there, so it needs to, can be something rather more complicated. Maybe we could talk about deep neural networks as being something just a little bit more sophisticated than a multi-layer perceptron from 1987. We need time, we need recurrence. The world's not a static place, ever. Nothing in the world is static. It needs to be connected onto the outside world. It needs to be embodied in some sense. Why should the neurons be as simple as what we're talking about here? Real neurons are sophisticated and complex. There are hundreds of different kinds of ion channels. That's hundreds of kinds of transistors. There's neuromodulators. We don't have any equivalent in things that we do. Why are we so limited in what we think about neurons in that sense? And if they're deep, should they not be wide as well? Certain parts of the brain, specifically the cerebellum, granule cells in the cerebellum, seem to give a wide representation as well as a deep representation. The brain is not a homogeneous organ, and neither should we think that deep neural networks have to be either. So I'm getting around the issue here, the deep neural networks really, by saying that deep neural networks are a whole lot more than the kind of engineering implementation of deep neural networks, beloved of the kinds of, of systems that we see reported in the journals. So in conclusion, I'm just suggesting a much bigger class of systems than those. I've got a short paper I put together, it's tinyurl.com slash agi2016lss, that talks a bit more about this, because I knew only about five minutes to talk about it. If we want to replicate these kinds of things, we want to do rather more. We want to have a a better way of doing these things. We want to think about this maybe somewhat differently in terms of levels. We want to think that what we've actually got are maybe good old-fashioned artificial intelligence, which seemed to me a bit of what Harry Marcus was talking about, implemented using things like deep neural networks. So deep neural networks can do other things than simply do the vector-to-vector -vector computation that we see in them. And so, I suggest that we can use deep neural networks to give us the AGI that we need, or some aspects of it, some aspects of good old-fashioned artificial intelligence, logic, reasoning, etc., hierarchical structure, rather more than the stimulus response, vector in, vector out, that we have in the ones that we have. And for that reason, I'm suggesting that deep neural networks, which in a sense 
we have in our heads that are in some sense deep neural networks. Our heads are full of neurons, as well as uh, astrocytes and glians, other things as well, and they do connect together in a deep way. So I would suggest that there is some sense in which deep neural networks are the only show in town. Thank you very much. <laughs>